Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, blade changes on the Rikon 10-326 14-inch bandsaw. Well guys, this week's show comes by viewer request and I've actually had a few people that have mentioned that when using the 326 bandsaw, when they change from a wider blade, like a 5 8 of an inch blade, down to say a 1 8 or 3 16 inch blade, they're having problems with the tracking or getting the bearing set up to be both guide and thrust and that sort of thing. So I was asked if I could please put a video as far as how to switch directly between the 5 8 and the lower ones like a 1 8 inch or a 3 16 and that's what we're going to do today. So let's start off by having a look at the bandsaw with the 5 8 blade in it. Well as you can see here the 5 8 blade is spinning and it is running centered and true on our upper tire. Guys, I've got the saw running with the guards open and that sort of thing to get some light in the compartment for filming. Consider this my disclaimer, do not run your saw with the doors open and with the guards off and that sort of thing. I'm doing it today for clarity, don't run your saw like that. Now, I'll get off my soapbox and we'll get to change in this blade. So I'm going to go through with you step by step now to show you exactly how to change it to a smaller size blade. Well, the very first thing that you want to do is unplug the saw. I think that goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway because I know there are still some um, hero types that do it with the power still active on the unit. That's not a good thing, guys, so unplug it. Next thing is we want to get the tension off and on the Rikon 326 it's this lever right here and you just pull it to the outside of the saw just like that and the tension is off. Now we can move forward with being able to remove the existing blade. We now want to do the preparation steps it takes to get this blade out. And the first thing you want to do is open your doors. It's best to have full access to be able to open the door 100% as wide as it can go. That will give you the easiest access to your blade and allow it to come out of its compartment a lot easier and a lot quicker and a lot safer. Second of all, you want to open up the front of your blade guard. Now, you may notice here that I've got gloves on. There's a very good reason for that. And that's because these blades are made to cut through wood, hardwood. Wood that is much harder than your little sausage fingers. So if you are going to be the hero and not wear gloves, don't comply or don't complain when the blade slices up your hands. So the next thing that you'll want to do, you've got the guard open, the doors all open. You have this little pin here. And you'll want to pull this out. And the reason for that, this keeps the table level, the split table, so that there's no problems there. You want to pull it out because this is the pathway that the blade is going to come through. Now, I'm going to cut in front of the camera here. I'll try not to get in the way. But the next thing you want to do is just support the blade from the top. Remove it from the tires. Being careful not to slice yourself here because these blades are very sharp. You're going to get it out from the bottom section, just like that. Pinch it between your thumb and your index finger just to guide it out of that split table and then carefully take it around the fence rails and the blade is off. How do you fold this blade now? Let me show you. Well, what you want to do and how you want to fold these blades, I've shown you this on the show before, but I'm going to show you again today. Hold the blade with your palm up, teeth facing out away from you. We have it on a mat just to avoid damaging any teeth because I have a concrete floor in here. Place your foot on that blade down at the bottom and then what you want to do is as you push down you want to twist. I know it sounds weird but you want to twist and now watch this now. So you twist, push down a full 
rotation. Do you see how I just did that there? You see that full rotation? Here, I'm going to carefully bring it back up. There we go. And take it full rotation all the way around. And you'll see there that that blade finds its own, finds its own place, its own seating. And there it is. And it's all coiled up. So there you go. That's how you coil up and store your blades. All right. So the other blade is gone, coiled up, and we now have our 3 16 of an inch blade. 10 teeth per inch, not that that matters, but this seems to be the one that's causing people the most trouble. Transposing the saw and its settings from being that 5 8 centered on the tires to this 3 16 So we're going to go through it step by step, and hopefully I can solve that for you. So here we have it. We're going to, same thing, pinching the blade between your thumb and index finger. Just going to slide it into that slot. We're going to bring the blade up around and get it onto the top tire. As we're doing that, we're going to tuck it in through the side here into this little slot, which brings it into the lower compartment. Now, just like that. Now, if you remember, when I did the review of this saw, I spoke about how I didn't like their tensioning guide. So we're just going to put the tension back on it. This blade is in no way, shape or form properly tensioned. And that is due to the fact that, well, the tensioning guide is off. I don't, I don't buy it, what they say. But either way, we're going to remove that tension. I'm going to line it up just roughly onto our tire. It doesn't have to be centered or anything like that. And then apply the tension. Once you get the tension set, we're just going to give it a spin and see where that blade is going. Now you want to try and not put your fingers into these holes because there are stuff at the back that you can hook as you're spinning. All right, so right off the bat, I can see that these bearings are in my way. So I have loosened this handle here and moved it back and we'll just spin it again to see how it's going to run. Okay, let me give you a shot of this so you can see where this blade is tracking because it is nowhere close to being in the center of the tire where it should be. Now, can you see where that is tracking? That is way back there on the back side of that tire. So how can we correct that? How can we get this so that it is running true and not causing us problems? And the way that we need to do it is by the knob on the back of the saw. Now I'm not talking about me because I'm in front of the saw. I'm talking about the tracking knob. So let's go there next. Now the way that this saw works is we have this tracking knob here, which is on the back of the upper cabinet of our bandsaw. And it has a locking mechanism. Hopefully you can see that here, but that locking mechanism has to be released. Now I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. And the best way I can say is that if you turn this knob clockwise, that blade is going to track towards the back of the saw. If you turn this counterclockwise, the blade is going to come out towards the front. So because we are right at the back of that blade, we need to turn this knob counterclockwise and it doesn't take much. So we're just going to give that a little bit of a tweak there. Now this is very loose and what I have discovered works and what can help you a lot when you're tracking this saw is just give a little tap on the wheel or the tire. And what that does is it releases the mechanism in here in case that mechanism is jammed. And we will just spin that wheel and see how we do. I can't see very well because the camera's in my way. But now we're just going to give it another little twist. One more little crack there. There we go. And now we're starting to track forward. So you want to be careful. Don't get your fingers caught in there. And we're
are tracking more and more forward. We're almost centered there now, and it doesn't take much. You want to be careful not to overdo it. And just like that, we are centered on our tire. And once you get it centered, take this locking knob, spin it all the way in tight to the body of the saw and lock it in place. It's just like a jam nut of a lathe. It just locks that in so it cannot go anywhere. So now it's time to adjust the bearings. Well, because of the different thicknesses of the blades, this assembly here, this entire blade assembly, or sorry, bearing assembly, can be loosened and shifted forward or backwards. And that is done by this knob right here. So if you're facing the front of the saw, it is on your left of your blade guard. Now I have this all wide open again for clarity. I don't need to say it anymore, you guys know that. So we're gonna loosen this up and you can see here on the inset footage, I can now move this guide forward and backwards. And what we need to do is we need to move it so that our bearings are just, just behind the teeth of our blade and our guide bearing is centered on our blade. So right about there. Now, if you find that you tighten this here and it's in your way, you can pull it out and rotate it without loosening or tightening anything, you know, if it's hanging down and getting in the way of your stock. But once you have that done, you just pinch these together now so that they are set, just like that, and then another one here. And you can see in the inset, hopefully, that the bearing is just behind the blade and then we're gonna set our thrust bearing all the way forward, just behind the blade, just like that. And that is our top bearings set. Now it's time for the lower set. Well, it's extremely difficult to try to film this and get in here and show you how this works, but the lower bearing assembly is the exact same as the upper in that it has this little knob right here, leather lever. And you do the same thing, loosen it off, and you can slide this assembly now forward or backwards for whatever suits your needs. So we're gonna line it up so that the bearings, the guide bearings are just behind our teeth of our 3 16th inch blade, and we're gonna tighten that down. Again, if it's in your way, pull it out and shift it. That's not a problem. And then, same thing as we did before, squeeze those bearings in, you want a little bit of a gap. Some people say if you put a dollar bill in there, that's your gap. I like to put them up tight to the blade and then back it off just a touch. Now I've got my fingers in the way there, there we go. We just push that thrust bearing forward and once we get it to where we like it, we can lock it down with our little knob here, just like that. And that is the bearing setup. And with the upper and lower guide and thrust bearings all set, we can return our pin to our split table. We can close our lower cabinet just like that. We can also close our upper cabinet so that the blade is protected. But before you do, make sure you close your blade guard and just tighten that down. And that, my friends, is as simple as it comes. Well, let's just fire it up and see how it runs.
I just wanted to zoom in here, guys, just to show you how the guide bearings are just behind, just behind the teeth of that 3 16 inch blade. And I'm thinking that maybe what some of you may be missing is the fact that this assembly slides back and forth on that, uh, on that arm that comes down with the blade guard. Well, just for fun, because I have a little extra time on the show, I think I'd like to change it back from the quarter inch back to the five eighths, including tracking and bearing setup. Now that we have it all set for that three sixteenths, and let's just see how long it takes me. Um, I don't know. Could be fun. Let's check it out. All right. So, start the timer now. First, we unplug the saw. Safety first, right? Blade guard door open. Blade guard open, other blade guard open. I'm going to release all of the guide and thrust bearings into their neutral positions. Then I'm going to get my gloves on. Got our gloves on. Release the pressure or the tension on the blade. Out comes the split table pin. Open the doors all the way for good access and pull that blade out of there. Pinch it between your thumb and your forefinger, or your index finger rather. Pull it out. I'm going to come over here. I might be off camera. Take it, spin it down. There we go. There's our quarter inch blade out. I will now take the 5 eighths. Guys, these are nasty to undo. Don't try to fight with it. If it wants to spring, let it spring. And there it goes. All right. Same thing, in through here, in through the split fence. Take it between your thumb and index finger, up onto the top wheel, guide it in through this slot, roughly onto the bottom wheel, just like that, and then hit the tension. Once you get the tension, spin it to see where your tracking is, we are way too far forward. So, to the back of the saw, give this wheel a little tap, one little quarter or a little slight turn. We're going clockwise at the back because we want the blade to go to the back of the saw and the blade is way too far forward at the moment. Okay, there that blade is tracked. Then we'll tighten it back up. Take this bearing assembly now, move it up till it's just behind the teeth. Line up your thrust bearing, tighten that down. Two guide bearings go in, tighten there, tighten there, thrust bearing. And tighten it down, close the blade guard. Just like that, now the lower bearings. Same thing, we've got to come way forward. So we're going to loosen them off, come forward just like that, tighten them down, pinch them together. Ta-da! And then the thrust bearing. Ta-da! Close this lower cabinet door. Put our pin back in for our split table. Close. Plug it in, uh, turn it on. Three minutes and 34 seconds. That's it. And that's the total tracking and everything. Bearings, tracking, you name it. it doesn't take long. And there you have it. Blade changes on the Rikon 10-326 14 inch bandsaw. Guys, my show is a tiny little 
speck when it comes to all the millions of people that there are in the world in the world and the fact that on my little speck of a show there were several people that inquired about this exact same problem tells me that there are a lot more people out there that are having this issue that don't know or maybe they just need someone to show them how to do this and I hope that today's show has corrected that problem for you and that you can try it and get that saw running to the way you want. Don't be afraid of these blade changes from the thinner ones or the uh, smaller blades to the larger ones. It should be quick, should be easy, and it should be effortless. And that's the one thing I love about this saw in comparison to my old one is that the tracking of the blade and the setup of the guide and thrust bearings is absolutely effortless. Guys, I hope that this video has helped you out. To those of you who requested it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss the notifications on future episodes of the show. Guys, I really want to thank you for tuning in. I truly appreciate it. And I hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.